Monday, December 1st, 2003, Maraval, Trinidad and Tobago. The Caribbean art community gathered at the country club for the launch of Picturing Paradise, Clico's 2004 art calendar. Ladies and gentlemen, pleasant good evening to you. Welcome. Mr. Edward Hart, Junior Minister in the Minister of Culture. Eddie, welcome. Representatives from the US Embassy, and we have representing the embassy, Mr. Baron Lobstein, His Worship the Mayor of Port of Spain, Mr. Murchison Brown, His Worship the Mayor of San Fernando, Mr. Ian Attali, His Worship the Mayor of Chagonas, Mr. Suraj Rambeshan. Representatives from the Consulate of the Republic of Guyana, Mr. Daniel Parkinson Production, members of the Clico Board of Directors, Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies and our featured speaker, Professor Rex Nettleford, Pro Vice Chancellor and Campus Principal, University of the West Indies, Dr. Bo Tuari, our 12 winning artists, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. Again, let me say a pleasant good evening to all and welcome. I would like to start this evening's proceedings by extending a warm welcome and our gratitude to all of you for taking the time to be with us as we formally launch Clico's 2004 art calendar. The pleasure of a company is much, of your company is much appreciated. This calendar project is dear to Clico for it continues to recognize the rich abundance of talented artists we have in the Caribbean region. For the past 12 years, Clico has produced an annual calendar that features the works of Caribbean artists, many of whom may or may not be known in their own countries, but whose work can compete on the international stage of fine art. Past editions of our corporate calendar have drawn works from the English, French, and Spanish Caribbean, and have included pieces by critically acclaimed local artists from Jackie Hinson to Carly Chang. Christopher Cozier, from Isaiah Budu to Carly Harris to Eddie Bowen. Since its inception, the demand for this calendar has grown tremendously, almost taking on a life of its own, and surpassing many others as the most sought after corporate giveaway in the region. Recently, I had the good fortune to be on a radio interview panel when a listener called in to comment that from the inception of its appearance, she has been using the calendar as a teaching aid in her art class. Hearing this touched us all at Colonial Life, and we are indeed grateful for the very positive public response to this annual offering. Ladies and gentlemen, while we are aware that many people are exposed to the fine art primarily through this offering, often framing the images to display in their homes and offices, there's always a feel-good emotion when one learns of some other creative way in which the calendar is used. This teacher brings yet another example to the table. Understanding the many ways in which the calendar impacts on the lives of others will continue to provide impetus and motivation for colonial life to play its part in the development of art in this country and throughout the Caribbean. This evening, we induct 12 new artists into our Clico Art Fraternity. And we are honored to have their works added to our growing collection of Caribbean art. At Clico, we have made it our mission to assist in effecting regional integration. Over the years, our operations have not only expanded outside the original domain of Trinidad and Tobago to encompass the region, but we have sought through the vehicle of art to encourage greater trans-Caribbean interaction. Clico is proud tonight to have garnered 12 prime pieces of regional art that form the body of art for our 2004 calendar. 
All of you will be leaving here tonight with at least one calendar, and we hope that you too will take pride in displaying it in your favorite environment. Ladies and gentlemen, as we get formal proceedings underway, it is now my pleasure to introduce my colleague, my friend, Mr. Ian Garcia, Vice President Marketing and Communication, under whose division the production of this piece directly hands. No pun intended. So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Ian Garcia. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you all for joining us in celebrating the formal launch of the Clico 2004 Art Calendar. As in previous years, this launch is one of the prime annual events of our organization and Caribbean art. Today is symbolic of the kinds of interest and commitment that colonial life has been fostering in the development of art. And as you take a closer look at the 12 paintings that make up this year's calendar, you must agree our objectives are truly being met. It was in February this year that Clico officially began the process that would lead to the content of this calendar. We had several goals in mind when we launched our regional wide competition entitled 12 visual of the Caribbean dream. Our primary aim was to, more, to, more, to more promote Caribbean art because we are a regional organization. And we wanted to get the best works from the best talent across the Caribbean. The winning artists are from Antigua, Barbuda, Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. In the Caribbean, we have an extraordinary amount of talent, creative talent, one may ask. And this competition has certainly added credence to this statement. Many highly quality submissions were received. But let us now tell you that this was not in fact, no means an easy task for our judges. Our second goal was to show that Caribbean artists or artists are equal to their counterparts anywhere in the world. And to highlight this, the 12 works that are here tonight will be put on display from the 3rd to the 20th of December at the atrium of Piaco International Airport. So as visitors to Trinidad enter in and leave in the country, these powerful images are what they would carry in their minds and hearts. Clico also plans, or they plan, to set up a website that would feature works of all 12 calendars over the years, because we want this painting to reach the world. Given our company's global profile, we expect that this website would significantly help to raise the awareness of the, of the quality of artwork coming out of the Caribbean region. Another major objective in mounting this competition was to demonstrate to all Caribbean people that art is not only a worthwhile activity in itself, but one which can be rewarded both spiritually and materially. Each artist whose work is displayed here today, will receive an award of $25,000 US. We hope this will help them in their growth and development. Yet another initiative was to encourage our young persons to get involved in art. As part of, of this effort, we have arranged for a one-day workshop that takes place tomorrow at the Creative Arts Center, UWI. At this session, some 130 secondary students from all across the country will meet our winning artists to learn from them and to share in the creative process. They will collaborate in painting a mural on a theme that they collectively determine. Before closing, on behalf 
On behalf of Colonial Life, let me pay tribute to one of the guiding lights of this project, the late Desmond Jotler. As many of you would know, Desmond died or passed away a couple of months ago, having almost completed his work on this year's calendar. As a senior account executive at Ample, Desmond drove all aspects of the production of our calendars. And to him must grow, must go a great deal of credit for the prominence the Clico calendar enjoys today. He was very passionate about the calendar project, and we always cherish his contribution to this corporate flagship. We devote today's launch to his memory as we present a special token of appreciation to his wife, Alet, and daughter, Asia, who have kindly accepted our invitation to be with us on this occasion. I will now like to ask Alet and Asia if they could join me here on the podium and ask our HR manager, Gwen McLaren, to make this presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, let me thank you once again for being here with us this evening as we celebrate another year of Caribbean talent and the launch of our art calendar 2004. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Ian. And um, Clico, as I said, we are very proud to be providing these type of opportunities to young budding artists, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the region. To Arlet and Asia, we continue to extend our best wishes to you as you move forward with your lives. And we thank you for all that you have done for us at Colonial Life through Desmond. Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is the Clico executive position to take our company forward through its expanded regional and global initiatives. Please, without further ado, give a warm welcome to Clico's man at the hem, our CEO, Mr. Claudius Deacon. And, um, in case you're wondering, this is the last speech you'd be hearing from a Clico official for the night. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you and welcome to the official launch of the Clico 2004 Art Calendar, entitled Picturing Paradise. As I look out at the many familiar faces, I see lifelong advocates of the arts. I see some new friends on behalf of the cause, and I see the artists whose work we celebrate here this evening. So I think it is fair to say that there has never been a business organization that has been able to bring so many artists and art education champions together at one time, in one place, like Colonial Life at this moment. There are many thanks that are due to each of you. To those who continue to work for the day when every child in this country can pick up a paintbrush and compose his or her future, we say thank you. To the artists, the younger ones, who have been inspired by the generations that have gone before and have used the same paintbrush to ensure that the Caribbean past is preserved and the future secured, we thank you. To the educators and parents, those of you who have made commitments to our children and schools 
and particularly to those who have ensured that art is still a part of our education system, we also extend a deep appreciation. There is something very special about what Clico has been doing for the past 12 years with this calendar. And its impact struck home when I visited the humble residence of an elderly lady who lives in the hills of Maraval not too long ago. There on the walls, proudly displayed alongside five black and white photographs of her children, was one singular frame print from a Clico calendar. She told me that the painting of the child in the frame, I think it was about six years old, made her think of her daughter, who had passed away years ago. She expressed how hard it had been as a mother to bury her child. And perhaps the framed Clico calendar page made her feel more alive and reconnected her to some very deep and happy memories. There are so many stories like that of an artist's work and the impact it can create. And perhaps all of you in this room can stand up with 10 or 20 stories of your own where you have seen how art has the power to sustain, to heal, to humanize, to change something in all of us. It's a potent power. Some may even say a frightening power. But it is beautiful and essential in a civilized society. Ladies and gentlemen, each year, the executives of Clico step up to the podium and we laud the importance of art and why it is essential that as a business entity, we continue to finance a, calen a calendar that showcases the work of some of the region's finest artists. We do so because we know the following facts to be true about art and education. We know, for instance, that art can level the playing field for youngsters from disadvantaged circumstances. We know that art reaches people who have fallen beyond the span of conventional methods. We know that art allows us to have, according to mass maker Peter Minshall, a better sense of what it means to be Caribbean. With this 13th edition of the Clico calendar, we reaffirm the importance of art, not as a luxury, but as a necessity. As business leaders, we increasingly understand the value of an art education as part of a diverse learning experience and its effect on broadening a person's skills. There exists a strong demand for talented minds with diverse training. In the technology industry, for instance, there is great need for graphic designers, software de developers, and system analysts and other creative individuals who have benefited from a training in an art background. This brings me to my final point about Clico as an organization and how we continue to seek to raise the bar when it came to searching for new ideas for this 2004 Clico calendar. In one of our brainstorming sessions, we wanted to find innovative ways of improving the exposure of our people to the work of regional artists. And then someone said, while it was wonderful to expose the work of our painters and to have our population hear what they had to say, or for that matter, to take our children to their shows and so forth. It's the teaching of art, the teaching of theater, and the teaching of music that really matters. In the arts, students, whether they're old students or young students, understand 
that you only learn to paint by painting it. There is no coasting, no, <clears throat> no hesitating. Learning requires work that only the budding artist can do. Work leads to skill, skill leads to success, and success builds self-confidence. If the student who isn't going to be another busker holder or Carol Sulam gets the idea that art applies to life and that life imitates art and art life, that in itself is a lesson to come out of the experience of studying the techniques of the great artists. So we at Clico became not only concerned with showcasing the work of our painters, but also with teaching art. Our paradigm shift was accomplished. And I'm proud to announce, ladies and gentlemen, that commencing the next academic year, we will, we will award annually two scholarships in art that will be tenable at the University, University of the West Indies. Thank you. We feel it is not only our responsibility to showcase current artwork, but to assist with the continuous development of the discipline. Fellow art lovers, let me at this juncture take the opportunity on behalf of our chairman, Mr. Lawrence Dupre, who is the initiator of the Clico calendar, to extend gratitude to the judges of our Caribbean-wide competition. Yours, we know, was a demanding job, and we deeply appreciate the time you contributed to this exercise to bring new talent to the fore. Could we give them a round of applause, please? Permit me as well to recognize and thank the hundreds of, re the hundreds of artists region-wide who participated in our competition and to congratulate those of you whose vision of your personal Caribbean dream came together to shape the 2004 Clico Art Calendar, Pitirin Paradise. On behalf of the Clico family, thank you all for being here. And I wish you and yours the best for the holiday season. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. OK, thank you very much, Mr. Deacon. Someone say Santa Claus. Well, that's the season. And we always say that our CEO leads from the front. So next time, Garcia and myself will also wear red and white. OK, so as we move on, we want to express, ladies and gentlemen, our deep appreciation to our next speaker, Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, Professor Rex Nettleford, for his gracious and ready response to our invitation to address us this evening. We know him as an integrationist and CARICOM citizen whose focus is the tireless promotion of culture, the arts, and education. He was recently honored by Oxford University with a scholarship being established in his name. We are very proud that this son of the soil has been recognized for his brilliance, not only in his home region, but internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege for me to introduce Professor Rex Nettleford, our featured speaker, for this evening. Please welcome him at a round of applause. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the CLECO family, honorable minister, your excellencies from the, of the diplomatic corps, your worships, 
My God, Trinidad has so many mayors. Um, my colleague, Pro Vice Chancellor and the principal of the St. Augustine campus, Dr. Bo Tiwari, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ones all, but of course, the artists as well. I want to say a very special congratulations to the artists, and um, I'm happy to see that Clico did not, wasn't satisfied not only with your paintings, but they also want the blood, body, and soul of you all here. That is good, because um, people see paintings, well, we people in the colonies see paintings by masters, and that said in both senses of the term, elsewhere. People who we just hear about, or have read about, and you are with us in flesh and blood. I'm also happy looking at the, the winning awards that in fact they speak to something which is very close to my heart, that art is mediated by social reality. And I've read the commentaries on each painting and I was very pleased to see that people were thinking of their society, of their environment, of the people they live with, and not coming out of what 19th century Europe bequeathed to us. It bequeathed so many good things, but it bequeathed some odd things which they have now cast away and we as good colonials hold on to. And I refer specifically to the notion that to be an artist you have to live in privileged despair. Um, well, you need not, and I'm happy to see that 25,000 US dollars, and you, if you, depending on where you live in the Caribbean, if you multiply that by a certain number, particularly for those of us who come from places which have funny money, um, it is in fact, a very good reward. And I want to congratulate Clico for its generosity, pouring back into the society, which in fact provides it its, its customers, its clientele, some of its profits. This is indeed good corporate citizenship and I myself am very pleased that you have thrown, you are throwing some of the money to the arts. Then of course, the, the number 12 keeps cropping up. Well, 12 months are in a year, we can't help that. But 12 islands of the Caribbean, I'm reliably informed that there are more than 12 countries in CARICOM Caribbean. So Clico, I'm sorry for you, for those who have been left out. But the figure 12 fascinates me because I kept saying to myself that I hope that the artists do not believe that they are at the Last Supper. <laughs> there was a 13th, 13th person at that supper and I wanted to know who could that be and then he just left, he just left the platform. He brought us words of wisdom. Now, I'm not for one moment suggesting that this is the eve of his crucifixion. <laughs> because, as I've always said to all leaders, like myself, look, don't settle for that thing on the cross, because neither resurrection nor ascension is guaranteed. <laughs> so stay where you are and work very hard. Artist, this is not the Last Supper. Thank God. Thanks, thank Mr. Dickham. It's not the Last Supper. And next year, we will launch again. And the following year, we will launch again, and so on. And we'll pray that the year will be added to by some miracle. Well, we people in the Caribbean, 
we add things, as we reinvent things as we go along, so maybe there will be a year when there are 13 or 14 months in it. Now, I regard this exercise as something of far-reaching importance for us all in this still groping Commonwealth Caribbean region. It comes at a time when eyes are understandably glued on the challenges of globalization and all other travels that would tempt us into an economic determinism, which for me always tends to drive humanity to defining itself as mere statistical units in a production process, concerned primarily with the bottom line. Most of our history has relegated the vast majority of us to this station of non-personhood. Whether, as Chatel, and I noticed that one of the paintings from Barbados, no less, did pick up the thing of the Great House and the Chatel houses, or indentured laborers. And ever since emancipation, in the case of the Chatel people, and the struggle for self-government in the case of all of us, we have been trying to convince ourselves and the rest of the world that we are more than beasts of burden, that we are imbued with soul, mind, and spirit, and especially mind, with its twin attributes of intellect and imagination. And even when we attract attention with our colorful carnivals and spirited gyrations, nobody can wind better than the Trinidadians, we have had to join the Hispanic Caribbean poet Pedroso and wail as follows, and I quote, are we no more than merriment? Are we no more than rumbas, black lust, carnivals? Are we no more than grimace and collar, grimace and collar, end of quote. We could update the wailing with, and I quote, are we no more than reggae and dance hall? No more than Bollywood and chutney, end of quote. Enough of us know that we are much more than all this. And even when we are all these things, we also know that these things go beyond minstrelsy, for they have the intrinsic power to define self and society using all the well-tried tools of subtle subversion, stubborn defiance, and the ardor of revolutionary rhetoric. The event tonight is for me full testimony of the ongoing struggle to give the lie to stereotypes about the likes of us including the stereotype that has, that has contemporary corporate enterprises dutifully following plantation culture by ignoring the creative, lasting, humane attributes of both the workers and consumers of what goods and services they produce. Clico is therefore on the right side of history, meaning that side which has served to celebrate and sustain the gift of survival despite the severance and suffering which characterize the downside of that history. For as I've been saying for decades, there is the need to recognize that rooted in our history is a Caribbean experience that is worth taking serious, seriously enough to be explored. The awards to our 12 artists this evening, following a region-wide search, is such an exploration which, as Clico has promised, will be continued rather than remain as a one-off exercise. For we are involved in long-distance running rather than in sprinting. This is how awesome the task of self-discovery and self-affirmation is. We will be able to sustain the journey only if we are prepared to vest our experience with the intrinsic validity of its being, and if we are courageous enough to recognize its weaknesses without self-pity and celebrate its strengths with conviction and faith. What arts and culture in all this are likely to lack, of course, is the support of great economic power 
which Caribbean taxpayers through their government should provide, and which corporate bodies like Clico in Trinidad and many in Jamaica seem to want to help in providing. Also, it also lack military might, which we are in no position to contemplate. No Iraq or regime change on our list. And happily, lack the urge to dominate herds of humanity beyond our shores. Far more important is for our artists, precisely because they are so important to our existence, or artists not to try to be Picassos or Michelangelo's before they are themselves. Still, we are yet to decide among ourselves whether not being able to quote from Shakespeare or hum Shostakovich should debar us from membership in the human race. There is no doubt in my mind, as I have said many, many, for many years, that failure to recognize a phrase of music from the compositions of Bob Marley, a Kitchener or a Sparrow, or a line from the poetry of Derek Walcott would not render such an unexposed European, Englishman or Russian, less than whole. I certainly do not wish to make a case for blockading ourselves against the richness of humankind's creative endeavors anywhere because all great artistic achievements are in any case the stock and capital of all of humankind. Bob Marley no longer belongs to us in the Caribbean, he belongs to the world. Just as Shakespeare no longer belongs to the English, he belongs to all of us. But neither would I wish to plead a case for mistaking fertilizers for the soil, not if the soil must be our own indigenous experience. The University of the West Indies welcomes the news that, the, that Clico, after contributing so generously to the education of future Caribbean leaders in the field of business by the offering of scholarships to business administration tenable at the St. Augustine campus, now has the intention of extending this, this courtesy to persons pursuing careers in arts and culture all over the region and tenable on all campuses, I hope, of the UWI or in territories contributing to the university. The news is like a breath of fresh air streaming through the corridors of academia. For in the Commonwealth Caribbean region, the neglect of culture seen as integral to education persists among many in the public bureaucracy and even in the teaching profession despite some of the clearest evidence that many of the people who have had anything of value to say about this region are those who have exercised their creative imagination to make sense of our human historical experience and existential reality. It will be to the lasting credit of Clico, a private sector entity, that it has an understanding of this fact. Indeed, no future West Indian generation will be able to pretend that the likes of Sparrow, Kitchener, and Rudder, of Tosh, Marley, and Cliff, of Beryl McBurney and Edna Manley, of Derek Walcott, Earl Lovelace, and Vidya Naipaul, of Albert Huey, Leroy Clark, and Carlisle Chang, of Peter Minchel and Jit Samaru, and of all of tonight's awardees did not exist. As an educator, and something of an artist, I am confronted on a daily basis with evidence that a sense of self-worth or that self-esteem which bolt bolsters the confidence in self, leading to giving of that self to the growth and development of society through trust in coordinated social action is vitally necessary. This is possible only when we are able to discover and to keep rediscovering who we really are, how our lives have been forged from that textured history of the past 500 years, and how our place is determined in the world, a complex, textured, groping world, itself in search of certitude, 
and ways of coming to terms with the physical environment which we are all unfortunately despoiling and degrading. Every true artist happily understands the tension that exists between becoming self and having that self as part of a larger whole. All art is, after all, mediated, as I said when I started, by social reality. And the self has to reach out as well as in if it is to appreciate the world we tenant. The wider implications for art and culture in the development process is therefore far less removed from the action of artists than first meets the eye. It is now universally recognized that the importance of culture, including artistic culture, to development has to do with the enhancement of a social capital, the sustaining of an ambience of civility and civilization based on the intellectual and cultural bedrock of any social aggregation, whether that aggregation be tribe, nation, or region. For if we are because we think, we also exist because we feel. As the late Dame Nita Barra said on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the United Nations, and I quote, the artist reminds us of our relationship to the earth and the order and unity which manifests in its animate and inanimate forms. Art is perhaps the true foundation of law and it is to the artist that the legislators should look. It is to the artist who instructs me, she said, of what I am and what is around me." End of quote. Clico, no doubt, is aware that we in the Commonwealth Caribbean have more artists per square inch than is probably good for us. But better breeding, breeding them than breeding gunmen or kidnappers. The economists and planners notwithstanding, it is the artist who has plumbed the depths of our anguish and our possibilities, producing words and music, movement and myths, syntax and satire, paintings and visual symbolism. With these have come hard cash, other than the 25,000, or precious foreign exchange, which oftentimes is all that matters to monetarists and many bottom line advocates, who are yet to view the work of artists as a productive variable in the development equation, rather than as the result of self-indulgent exercises that cannot contribute to the per capita income, the GNP, or the GDP. Indeed, the presence of the intervention of a corporate entity such as Clico into the fostering of arts and culture is itself a contribution to the activation of the voluntarism that fuels civil society and by extension to the promotion of democratic governance which in practice widens the space and opportunity for participation by a wide variety of people in our citizen race. All of planet Earth needs the lessons which these cultural activists, individual and collective artists, will teach for the journey far into this new millennium. For nothing short of an expansiveness of thought, embracing a new vision for a groping rainbow world, a new sense of self, and new ways of knowing to underpin new ways of living can guarantee a safe conduct into this millennium. Clico, by its generosity, can help make the new vision possible for some who might not have had the possibility of participating. I stand willing to offer assistance to, in helping Clico to shape the terms of their commission, which in its targeting of the literary, visual, and performing arts per se, should perhaps also focus on the investigation and analysis of such creative art forms as are pursued in the relatively new field of, say, cultural studies. And I'm very happy to hear, sir, that you are 
arranging an exposure between young people and the artists themselves because it's the process in which they are involved that they ought to share with their audience as well as their paintings. For maybe it is culture that really counts at this time in the important pursuit of education defined on traditional lines, but adaptable to the changed and ever-changing circumstances of the contemporary world. Clicker's generosity is right on target, for in the words of a Swahili proverb, the beginning of wisdom is knowing who you are. Draw wisdom and listen. Clicker, by its demonstrative act of engagement, evident in tonight's exercise, has shown wisdom, is listening, and has put its money where its sensitivity and vision have taken its mouth. Welcome aboard, Clico. We are all in your debt. I thank you. OK, thank you very much, Professor Nettleford, for those kind words, for your stirring words of encouragement, for your vision of art as being integral to the creation of a harmonious Caribbean community, something that colonial life has been pursuing since its inception in 1936. And we assure you this definitely will not be the last supper but we'll continue in years to come. We thank you also for your offer of assistance. I'm sure our CEO will make that contact with you. So thanks again for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the part of this evening's function for which we have all been waiting. The presentation of the 12 artists whose winning interpretation of Clico's art competition, visual of a Caribbean dream. We have found their place in the Clico Art Calendar 2004. And with that cue, we should have had some music <laughs> coming. Many people don't Thank know you. who and what is Clico, a company 67 years old, a corporate citizen of the world, a social worker, a facilitator, sometimes referred to as a godfather. Another destination is commitment, involvement, and of course, development. Sharing knowledge and reaching out, integration is what Clico is about. Clico is a neighbor and a good, good friend who does make plenty money and not afraid to spend. Clico is a part of life and can be described as a faithful wife. Clico is always there and true, caring and sharing everything with you. We really made a round of applause. So ladies and gentlemen, as you see, we sought some help tonight, and I would like you once again to welcome the Lord Relator. So at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I ask that our CEO, Mr. Deacon, and Mr. Ian Garcia, VP Marketing, please assist on stage. I would like to present our first artist from the country of Guyana, Mr. Martin Jr. The very first awardee was born in 1943. His name is Martin Jr. And he hails from Guyana. The name of his piece is Freedom of Movement. Congratulations on your accomplishment. Clico really chose your team, one of the 12 visuals of Caribbean Dream. No, stay right there. Are you in the main? With a piece representing February, our next artist is from Trinidad and Tobago. Women does get in a rage if you openly discuss their age. But Carol Sulam, I can safely say it's Barataria she came from. Carnival Tuesday she put on show, which is well known to Trinidad and Tobago. I will say aloud, Carol, you made Tico so proud. Right. 
Our next artist hails from Grenada, and his work marks the month of March. This young man has a bachelor's degree from Parsons School of Design, New York City. Joseph Brown is this fella name, and is from Grenada that he came. Saturday Market is the name of his piece. It is very good, I wish to say at least. Clico wish you the very best, and wish you continued success. Our next artist here is from St. Kitts Nevis. The work is featured in the month of April. Here comes a native of Anguilla who grew up in Jamaica. Her name is Joan Malaleo, BA in Fine Arts, Bennett's Greensboro. Flowers of St. Kitts she has on display, representing St. Kitts Nevis today. It will rarely be a thrill to see the calendar in April. Sani Manite. The month of May brings our artists from the country of Jamaica. Cecil Cooper is from Jamaica. Your work is part of the calendar. If you spent 35 years in art, it has to be in your blood and comes from your heart. It must be a special thing. Your offering is fate of spring. And because you are so faithful, Clico is grateful. Sani Mani. <laughs> At the halfway point of our presentations, our artist from June comes from Antigua and Barbuda. Educator, actress, designer, involving art, Hedda Dorham. A woman of many parts, my Caribbean, the Pearl, says that she is truly a Caribbean girl. Antigua Barbuda is proud of you, and Clico will share that sentiment to this calendar. I am certain sure will be better than anything that went before. In July, our artist hails from the Bahamas. The Bahamas is here. True Jackson Petit. His work is fresh, exciting, and neat. He is not afraid to say that he is still learning his trade. Things Bahamian will capture the eye on the calendar in the month of July. Keep on keeping on is what Tico advice because it's worth the sacrifice. For the month of August brings our artists from Barbados. Barbados is the land that produced Kim Annette Bryan, a columnist with Barbados Advocate. No doubt she is destined to be great. Utopia, these fields, and hills indicate the true art one can pay one's bills. <laughs> you may ask me how I know the prize money from Clico really tells me so. And the month of September is represented by the island of St. Lucia. St. Lucian lifestyle and subject matter is the focus of this young painter. Painting and showing the beauty of his country is priority for Mathieu Saint Prix. Laundry Day is one example of excellence to which Mathieu is capable. Clico says, welcome friend to the club, to Mathieu for doing a very good job. The month of October in our calendar is represented by Dominica. In Dominica, Clico has a friend, namely Earl, Darius ATN. He is hardworking, he is very smart, 
a champion for the appreciation of art. Belly session for the calendar describes indigenous art to Dominica, Mr. ATM. I will say to you, I'm convinced you are one of a chosen few. Eleventh month, November, is heralded by St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> St. Vincent and the Grenadines rang perfectly with Carolyn Boop's sardine. She did her degree in London and she songs like excitement and fun. Icons of Caribbean unity will qualify in any company. When you have a name like Caroline, no one including Clico could leave you behind. And our final artist this evening represents the month of December. Last but not least, we are very pleased. A special welcome here to Belly's. Clico is happy to choose a piece of work by Pedro Cruz. My life, Esperanza, is Pedro's work on the calendar. Congratulations to you and the rest of them. So now we look forward to this collector's item. All right, Clico proudly presents to you the 12 artists whose work have formed and fashioned our 2004 art calendar. Mr. Ian Garcia and Mr. Dacon are supposed to unveil. You're supposed to unveil this check, this. Oh, here it comes. Yes. This represents Clico's contribution to the Aces of the Caribbean. Thank you very much, Gloria Sanian. So on behalf of Clico, give them a round of applause as they leave and go. These are all winners in the categories. Thank you so very much, artists. Gents, we are very pleased. So this is what I want you to understand. Give the 12 winners a big, big hand. On behalf of Clico, welcome to Trinidad and Tobago. Sandy Sandy and San Fernando. Thank you very much, artist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Relator. Excellent. Give Relator another round of applause. Thank you. And we like to call at this point, invite Heather Dorman, one of our winning artists, to move a vote of thanks. Heather? Congratulations, Clico. We, the participants in your competition, 12 Visions of a Caribbean Dream, declare you the winner of the Visionary Award. You have realized that art and culture are catalysts of change, development, integration, and an appreciation for diversity. We, the artists of the Caribbean, thank you for taking this bold initiative to bring the Caribbean together through art. We thank you for exposing the work of excellent artists who otherwise would not have become known. You have given us a unique opportunity to paint our reality, our vision of who we are, all have become as we seek to separate ourselves from our colonial past. On a more personal level, I must say that winning the competition for myself and for Antigua and Barbuda is probably the highlight of my artistic career. 
and I'm eternally grateful. I paint because of some innate need, because I have a story to tell, and not for the monetary reward. But then, if it comes along with something like $25,000, then that makes the pleasure of painting so much sweeter. Many people in Antigua and Barbuda, and I'm sure in the other countries as well, have been requesting copies of the Clico Art Calendar. I don't know how many I'll be allowed to take back with me, but I'm hoping that as a follow-up to this most exciting exercise, we might see coming out of this competition, perhaps a hardcover copy of a coffee table book that compares the works of all the artists who have been featured in the calendar from the first to the present. Perhaps there can be a traveling exhibition of all the work to all the Caribbean countries. And finally, perhaps a calendar featuring only women artists of the Caribbean. <laughs> Our sincerest gratitude to the management and staff of Colonial Life Insurance Company Limited for your hard work and dedication to this project. And we all appreciate as well the warm hospitality, hospitality that you have extended to us, including our delightful luncheon today. And we say thank you. To the judges of this competition, a very special thank you. We appreciate how difficult it must have been for you to travel many miles across the Caribbean to get the job done. And we know that adjudicating the hundreds of entries for this competition could not have been an easy task. It is my pleasure too to extend heartfelt appreciation to the firm that produces the Clico calendar each year and who organize this year's competition and the related events. Our special thanks to All Media Projects Limited, better known as Ample, and our fond remembrance of our friend Desmond Jutler, who I had the pleasure of meeting in Antigua before he passed. And now, to all of us whose work will be featured in Clico's 2004 art calendar, my fellow winners, it is indeed a pleasure to be in the company of such distinguished artists. My warmest congr congratulations to all of you on this great achievement, and I wish you all continued success. My love and best wishes to all of you as we all continue to make art. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Heather, for those words and that um, comment about female artists. You know, we'll have to talk to the guys and see exactly what they come up with. But thanks for your, your vision. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our chairman, Mr. Dupre, who unfortunately is not with us this evening, our CEO, Mr. Deacon, management and staff of Colonial Life, we thank you for being here. We'd like to say a special thanks to all the artists, to Heather for your vote of thanks the judges, Professor Nettleford for your address, ample advertising to Astra and her team, and we would not forget, obviously, Desmond, who played a very important role over the last 12 years in the success of this, this calendar. Relator for his singing ability, <laughs> and there's a lady who walks around very, very quietly, a lady by the name of Deborah Garraway. We like to recognize her and recognize her contribution. Trinidad Country Club, and you, obviously, our distinguished guests. We thank you for being here. I'd like to invite you now to view the exhibition, and obviously we have some refreshments for you to partake. So thanks again for being here with us. All the best.